Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener, and today I'm sharing with you a very fun, very cool project that I've been working on in conjunction with uh, the Troy Belts Fence Talks program and our neighbors. So the little cute house you see with the orange shutters back there, that is the cottage that is on our neighbor's property, and they have a house over here. Um, and our driveways run right next to each other. And um, the whole idea of the Fence Talks program is neighbors helping neighbors, friends helping friends, whether that be you know, sharing tools, sharing advice, or creating a communal space together. And that's what we've done here. So because we share this area between our driveways, we have a line of cedar trees over here. Um, and so even though the cedar trees are uh, limbed up by the deer, um, you still see the trunks there. But then once you get to this area, we've got this really big spruce and then kind of an open area here. And so they look over here, we look over there. So we decided why not create just a small, easy, carefree little garden in this spot. So it'd be something more than weeds. Now, the weeds are actually a good sign because as you might imagine, under this huge spruce tree, this is a lot of dry shade. I've got some plant material in my hair. <laughs> this is a lot of dry shade. So um, the fact that weeds will grow here is a great sign because it means if weeds will grow there, something will grow there. You just have to find the right plant. So this project actually has been developing over well, the course of a month or so. And although we could have cranked this project out in just one day, it's been really nice to just take it in pieces, take a very relaxed, um, staged approach to it, and just sort of do it when we all have time to do it. Um, and I think that's a great sort of lesson here, is that not every project has to be um, a big get it done, hurry up and get it done. Sometimes things can adjust to our schedules. So let me just take you through some of the process here. So when we came here, this whole area was weeded, but the worst problem here is that um, there was a huge layer of pine needles and believe it or not, chipped up pine cones because the squirrels love this tree and they chip up their pine cones and they bury them here. So the very first thing we had to do was get in there and actually uncover some of this and get to soil. Uh, it took, um, I removed around the trunk of the tree probably almost a foot of just this built up material, which a little bit of that is not bad, but a lot of that is not really something you can plant in. So I needed to get to soil. So a lot of that I just dug out with a shovel by hand. When we got to the bottom line, I actually used a blower to get in there and just get that last layer of pine needles off the top. And then fortunately, my neighbor has the most beautiful pile of leaves. Every year he, you know, sucks up all his leaves and he throws them in a big pile, which means he has a giant pile of leaf mold. So we had him use his uh, tractor to come over here and dump a couple of big loads of um, this leaf mold. Some of it's fully decomposed, some of it's not, but it's a great mulch. So I put that in first and then we're going to plant, get to the soil from there. So that's where we're at in this process now. Now let me just quickly talk to you about um, plant choice here. And then I'll walk around and I'll show you the plants that we have chosen. But so this is the criteria for plants in this area where they have to be, of course, zone five hardy, um, low maintenance because none of us want more garden areas to take care of, adaptable to dry shade after they're established, which means we will have to keep watering them regularly this year to get them established. And then after that, they're gonna to have to take care of themselves. And then deer resistant, because we have a lot of deer in our neighborhood. Um, I don't wanna to have to spray this area. Um, I mean, I will hit it if I'm walking by with a deer spray, but I don't wanna to have to worry about a deer coming through in one night and just decimating this whole area. So that lives us to, gets us to the plant palette that we have now. And I've just started laying out the plants. So I'm gonna walk you around, show you what we have. I've got a few more plants coming in, which I'll show you at the end of the video. <laughs> I'll update with the latest plants that have come in just to fill in a couple of these areas. Um, but just to show you what, how I'm laying things out here. So first off, let me give you the lay of the land. Our driveway is to the left. You're probably used to seeing our garage and the neighbor's driveway and house are over here. Um, in fact, I will show you it from the other direction too. So this is now our driveway on the right, there's on the left. So when they're driving out of their driveway, this is their view of our house. And when they're coming in, they see our garage. So it's just kind of natural that you look in these, this area. Now, um, 
The first couple of plants that we've got here is, this is a dwarf's goat's beard. This one is called Chantilly Lace. I also have one in here called Misty Lace. Both of them grow to be about 30 inches tall and equally wide, so they'll spread out quite a bit. So you see I've got those, it's dappled shade here right now. You see I've got those sort of evenly spaced. The other plant that is quite a feature here is Epimedium. You probably know that Epimedium is sort of a natural go-to for dry shade. Um, there's a little sun, spot of sun on that one. Now right now all you see is the foliage, which is beautiful. Um, sometimes it's even evergreen. They've already bloomed for this year. They get small little yellow flowers in spring, which is very pretty, and they do get some fall color on them. These will bulk up quite a bit, so I've got these spaced out pretty well too because I don't want to have to come in here every year and divide plants. So also we were low, you know, we wanted to keep to a budget. So we're going to space plants out a little farther than I might normally, just to make our plants go a little farther. Now around this, we've got a, a lot of ground cover type plants because we didn't want anything too tall. So I've got, they're lay, just laying on the ground here, but see if I can stand that guy up. So this is geranium macrorhizum. This will get to be a foot wide by next year. These grow incredibly well. We've just got little plugs that we're just gonna dot in. Plugs are really helpful because there'll be a lot of tree roots here. So if you have to dig a smaller hole, it's much easier to get the plants in. I also have a sort of random heuchera that I picked up. This is just carnival watermelon. It wasn't really part of the original plan, but um, we're gonna give it a shot in this spot. And then, I have not spread them out yet. We've got, this is Lamium. I believe this is one called Ghost. And this will also be a beautiful ground cover that will not get very tall, that we'll be able to fill in around all the edges. Um, and this should fill in really well. So, the, oh, and the other thing that's here already is Sweet Woodruff. And so we're just going to play upon that. We're going to let that come in here. I've got more sweet woodruff around the property to um, fill in some of these gaps. Sweet woodruff does a pretty good job of keeping other weeds out. So it's a nice ground cover to have in sort of a more natural area and you don't have to do really anything for it. Okay, so that's the planting plan. Now I do have some more of that geranium macrorhizum coming and I'll use that to fill in where I feel like we need things when that gets here. Then I also have a Carrick's called Blue Zinger coming. So now we just have to um, make sure that the neighbors like the way I've laid out the plants and then I think they're gonna swing by and help get some of these uh, in the ground. Okay, so these are my neighbors. This is Dick and Jean and they're fabulous neighbors and they've just come over here to kind of see how i lay out all the plants and what do you guys think does it work i think this is awesome all right it works and we are so lucky to have you as a neighbor <laughs> well I'm, we're lucky to have you guys as neighbors too so it all works out really good so as i've already sort of explained you know one of the reasons i picked these plants is because they're low maintenance so none of us are going to have to spend like a lot, like maybe like once in spring we'll swing by, chop them off, and they'll be good to go. Oh, great. Throw some water on them for this year. So none of us will really have to worry much. And the nice thing about pretty much everything here is that it's all going to kind of bulk up and fill in. So even though it looks a little sparse in a few spots right now, you know, by the time next year comes around, and certainly the year after that, everything should be filled in. And I think this will look really good. Awesome. Do they fill in on their own? Or yeah. Do we have to nope. move them? That's okay. the, I mean, that's the nice thing here is that most of these are just going to get bigger. Like this guy, the, um, the goat spirit, is probably going to get like 30 inches wide. Wow, okay. Um, so will they actually then grow over and then reroot, or do they just nope, keep they, growing? they just keep building out from, okay. from the crown. Now this plant right here, this is uh, geranium macrorhizum, and it doesn't look like much right now. But by next year, this will be probably about a foot wide. And this one does kind of spread a little bit by rhizome, so it'll move a their little foliage, bit. Their leaves get kind of big. Yeah, exactly. Too. Yep. And they get this sort of pretty pink, purple flower, but they also get a little fall color too. So they oh, look nice. like something in fall. And actually in a lot of winters, they're evergreen. So they're actually nice. there the whole year. And the other thing that's really nice about all of these plants, particularly the ones that we're going to put along the edges, is that they're super 
um, tough and hardy. So like when we snow blow or plow snow or whatever, yeah. like none of these things should be particularly sensitive to that. Great. Snow can get piled up on them. They'll figure it out, you know, whatever. Awesome. So mm -hmm. there's that. All right, so you guys think we should start planting? Yes. Yeah, let's do some planting. All right, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so it's a little bit over a week and about 25 degrees cooler than the last time we were at this garden. Um, we've been watching it, watering it, everything is growing in really well and the last plants that I was waiting for just came in. So this little beauty right here is Carrick's Flocka Blue Zinger. So I just want to take a moment to specifically talk about this plant because it actually has gotten a little controversial. I love it when plants get controversial, that cracks me up. But it has shown to be a little bit invasive in some areas, so some places are no longer carrying this plant or not recommending it. Now, I have done my due diligence on this plant, um, and I have talked to um, respected garden designers in our area and other people who use this plant to get a little bit of a better feel for whether, I mean, the last thing we want to do is create a problem, right? So basically, uh, this is a, a semi-shade lover, and it likes moist soil. So it does get pretty big. Well here it's going to be in shade and dryish soil. So my hope is that it will grow well but it's not going to go out of control and I feel pretty confident in that. It is a fabulous ground cover. If you have the right conditions it's just fabulous. It just gets about six to ten inches tall. I think it's zoned four through nine. It's got a pretty wide range but I just wanted to just kind of put a little warning stamp on this one that you should do a little research um, to see how this plant might behave in your garden. And maybe if you want to try this one, just buy one or two and keep an eye on them. I mean, they're not going to like take over the world while, you know, while you sleep, but keep an eye on them and see if you're happy with the habit before you commit to a lot of them. Okay, I'm going to get these in the ground so that I can show you the whole rest, the whole project. Okay, so a final look at the plantings. You can see that I've dotted in this carrot. It's particularly along this edge where I need something really, really tough because of snow and driving and all that. A little cluster of it here that kind of wraps around uh, the outside, stepping over into the neighbor's area where we've looked at all these plants, carried that blue zinger around this edge, um, which I think is gonna look so pretty with the lamium right here, when the lamium really gets going, I think it's all gonna come together. Everything is looking pretty happy. I did water last night, so the soil is feeling really nice and moist, which is great. Now, I did transplant. I have some ash tree seedlings that need to come out here. And I did transplant a little bit of sweet woodruff over here, although transplant isn't exactly the word because I dug it out of the garden, let it sit for two days, and then threw it in and never watered it. But that's just how tough sweet woodruff is. So most of this is going to take. And I have some more to bring over here from other areas in the garden. So we'll sort of gradually fill in around this tree over here so that we can try to keep these um, little seedlings under control, which just want to pop up everywhere. Okay, so I thought it'd be fitting to close this video all about sharing a space with a neighbor. By doing it from the neighbor's yard, looking at our yard, so that's our yard in the background there, probably a view you don't get to see very often. I had a lot of fun with this project, in part because we took our time with it. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed following this project uh, from the beginning to the end. Make sure you do check the description for links to um, the original uh, blog post that I wrote, which talks a little bit about more of the background about this and more detail about the plants, some of the tools we use to make this happen. And I hope you consider doing something with a neighbor today. Um, or maybe it's not even your next door neighbor, maybe it's somebody down the road, but uh, there's something really nice about having a shared space with 
um, other people that everybody takes care of. It's a, it's a very community feel and these days I think that's pretty great. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon. Bye.